Welcome to the session. This session was actually recorded during the symposium. We had a couple technical difficulties, so I'm re-recording it now. During the symposium, this was recorded by two educators who are founding members of Practicing Musicians Online Learning Project. Um, they are two out of 140 educators who have volunteered, 65 of which who we consider founding members. Uh, and I will actually be presenting it. My name is Jake Douglas. I'm the founder of Practicing Musician. I'll be presenting it uh, because they are taking some time off before their school year starts. So uh, I just want to get started by saying that in addition to this recording, we offer weekly office hours. We're going to start those August 11th to answer questions that may arise. Uh, you'll receive emails with that information um, or you can access that from our practicingmusician.com homepage. These recordings uh, will be embedded into our site at the practicingmusician.com professional development symposium page. So if you go to our homepage, uh, go to the about us in the top navigation bar <clears throat> and then go down to the PD symposium, you'll be good to go. Um, let's get started. There we go. So you can watch the keynote on that PD symposium page I just mentioned that I gave to learn a lot more about me, why I founded Practicing Musician, but just a quick synopsis music is the catalyst for change in my life in so many other people's lives that it's to me uh, unfathomable that not every student can access a musical education so i've made it my mission in my life to make sure that every student has access to not only music education but a high quality music education and that every student can have some type of personalized instruction even if we have ensembles as big as 50, 100 students in a single class, we need to be able to provide them with personalized uh, <clears throat> learning capabilities. Now, the reason that I'm qualified to be running a company like this is because I actually studied psychology and neuroscience and then got my yoga teaching certification, which in addition to the fact that I've been playing flute, piano, drum set saxophone since age four and teaching privately on those lessons um, the the synergistic blend of all of those um, <clears throat> educational experiences gives me a really well-rounded understanding of how human beings actually acquire and integrate information uh, the intellectual from the psychology and neuroscience background that i have and then the experiential from the music both learning and teaching that I've done, as well as the yoga teaching certification uh, class that I took. So all of this has been blended together with educational technology and is the reason why we have so many founding members on our online learning project. Some key aspects to talk of, or to look for in music education became clear when the pandemic happened. The first is uh, you just want to ask yourself, is this designed by K-12 through music educators? Uh, is this designed by people who are actually in a classroom like I am? Now, I am not, but what I have done is worked with 140 people who are music educators, which gives a wide range of what needs to happen in the classroom. And then I help guide their input uh, with best practices from the psychology neuroscience uh, fields which is how humans actually acquire and integrate information again so we've come together to collaborate and build out a really 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 strong and useful tool for your classrooms <clears throat> next question is does the teaching tool provide improvement over our current method books now if the teaching tool is a method is the scope standards based um, are there step-by-step -step tutorials created by appropriate experts. I mean, I want to be learning the flute from a flute expert. That's how I'm going to best learn the flute uh, or tuba from a tuba expert. And the next question is, can I personalize individual student learning? Um, so blending the personalization and that individual uh, learning 
method with the ensemble academic model that we're so used to in music education. Is the technology available to every student? Equity is huge. It's absolutely critical. So the price, price has to do with if it's accessible. What devices are needed, right? Do students require Wi-Fi to use the technology? Um, many students don't have consistent or stable internet access at home, as we all know. The pandemic made Wi-Fi more accessible, but that's it's not universal yet. So we have to ask ourselves that question. We have to ask ourselves, are the materials and resources downloadable for offline learning in case my students don't have access to Wi-Fi, right? Um, another critical component is, does the technology track student progress? Is the technology customizable? Culturally relevant pedagogy, culturally responsive teaching, these are two huge uh, concepts that have really been brought to the forefront. I think the, the technology has to be customizable if we want to be culturally uh, responsive and have culturally relevant pedagogy. The final one is, is there training and support for teachers? And if so, what's the price? I mean, right, we could have the best free service in the world, but if I don't know how to use it and it's too expensive for me to learn how to use, then what's the purpose? Like I can't, I, I you know, so, so those are critical. And I, along with that is, is the service actually easy to use? I don't want it to be so complicated that I need ongoing training. I want to be onboarded, maybe have a few follow-up sessions, and then be good to go. Maybe get a, a video when the new feature is released or something. But I want this to be easy for me. That's what, when in my research and in all of the educators that I'm working with, um, their top priorities are easy to use and uh, affordable and accessible. So we focused on all of those. Um, practicing musician is easy to use. It's a curriculum. It supports your classroom teaching with videos, with sheet music, with assessments. It's 100% free. And our mission is to promote equity in music education. Now our high quality curriculum that's easy to use already has 3,500 plus video lessons and 16 band and orchestra, or uh, four 16 band and orchestra instruments, excuse me. <clears throat> They're sequentially ordered. Um, they're taught by instrument specialists, so a flute player can learn from a flutist, a tuba player can learn from a tuba player, right? And they're all created by music educators um, or musicians that teach for a regular basis, right? Um, you can personalize and track progress. You can assign lessons in sequence. Uh, and, <clears throat> well, that allows you to... Um, have the students play together as an ensemble but if a student let's say a student named mariah is behind the rest of her classmates then you can go back and assign her the video tutorial that is necessary for her to fill the gaps in uh, in her knowledge while the other students are still progressing as an ensemble so you're not taking any time away from the other students to work with mariah to make sure that she's up to speed it's beautiful um now, because they're video tutorials, students can learn and practice at home. It's like they have their own personal trainer at their home, and they can learn at any time. Um, and then being able to track each student's activities, including online assignments and practice logs. This is absolutely critical to be able to show indications of student progress. Um, now, accessible for all. Um, let's see. So what's really, what's really cool, besides the fact that it's free and all content is downloadable, is not that we provide those tools free. I mean, that, that is really cool and everybody loves that. But it's that what we have built is driven by your wants and needs, not just the wants and needs of the volunteers, the founding members of our online learning project. It's driven by the wants and needs of every single music educator. And so if you want something, you simply tell us. One of our team members will gladly meet with you to discuss how we can create those materials that you need to be successful. We're not trying to make money off of this. So we don't have to worry about, am I going to make money off of this tool? The only thing that matters to us is, is there a demand for the tool? And then can we find somebody to actually create the tool? So we're prioritizing the development of these tools and materials based on the number of requests and then contributors for a specific project. Now, if you're interested in directly contributing to Practicing Musician to help it become the platform that you want it to be, rather than just providing feedback and suggestions, 
then you can uh, be the change by joining the Music Educator Online Learning Project, just like the 140 other music educators and musicians. You can contribute a few hours to a single project or a few hours each week, it's up to you. Of course, if you don't wanna contribute, don't worry, you will never be required to contribute to have access to practicing musician for you and your students. <clears throat> but we're gonna discuss how you can sign up to contribute at the end of this presentation. Right now, let's examine the tools in our current Fundamentals of Music Mastery method. Then we'll walk you step-by-step step through the process of setting up your account and using each tool. So we have already created a Fundamentals of Music Mastery method for concert band and orchestra programs. It follows the same general scope and sequence as mo most method books you're used to using in your classroom. So you can use it to supplement your favorite method book. Um, that being said, method books are still it's a visual stimulus meant to teach an auditory art form. And that reality is simply that you cannot convey all qualities of music in a method book. So we've designed Practicing Musician so that it can stand alone as your main resource when you're ready to fully transition to a more comprehensive teaching tool. Fundamentals of Music Mastery Sequence starts with lessons on how students and parents can select an instrument and then moves from beginning to advanced general theory concepts and instrument specific techniques. We have book one completed for, and online available to you for both concert band and orchestra. Concert band books two and three are currently in production with the goal of publishing both by early fall 2021 and orchestra book two is in production. A um, Couple key components about these is that the video tutorials are short, 30 to 90 seconds, somewhere in that range, sometimes a little more, a little less, but <clears throat> the really important concept, more so than the length, is that there's a single topic. So it makes it really easy for students to retain the information. Then there's questions to demonstrate the student's understanding. After the question, there's sheet music to practice the concept, and then model cornerstone assessment practice logs so that they can uh, really process what they have done. Um, all of the assessment rubrics on our site are National Core Art Standards line because they come from the Model Cornerstone Assessment rubrics. And they were adapted by Dr. Frederick Barak, who was one of the co-chairs of the researchers, uh, developers, and statisticians that created the Model Cornerstone Assessments. So we have the leading experts on our team uh, helping to create all of these assessments. Now, students uh, earn achievement medals um, as well, and we'll talk about that in a bit, but that really helps student motivation substantially. So to make sure our service is easy to use, practicing musician tutorials are in, organized into uh, <clears throat> chapters that allow you to quickly find each lesson. The first chapter is picking out your instrument, which has video tutorials for parents, such as renting versus buying, um, manufacturers and models, types of cases, accessories and cleaning supplies, essential tools, and other instrument specific lessons. <clears throat> Depending on the instrument, the entire first chapter takes five to 10 minutes to watch, and every product mentioned by our teachers are their personal preferences. We do not currently endorse any companies. After receiving their instrument, your students can watch chapter two, getting to know your instrument which includes tutorials such as taking your instrument out of its case, putting your instrument together, parts of your instrument, and other instrument-specific lessons. In total, watching these tutorials and practicing the concepts takes students about 30 minutes to complete. <clears throat> After finishing chapter on basic instrument-specific technique, you will be able to assign them the chapter Rhythm 101. And this is just basic uh, staff notation and rhythms without pitch. You don't want to be piling on all of these complexities at the same time. We don't want to be teaching them how to read notation and rhythm and pitch and intonation and fingerings and, you know, breath, all breath support and everything simultaneously. We want to break it down into easy to digest chunks of information so that they can uh, model or, excuse me, mirror what the teacher is modeling in real time and get that uh, concept down before they move on to the next. So <clears throat> we, we focus on rhythm for... Uh, typically takes about one to two classes, maybe three classes to get through the rhythm stuff. That provides a really good foundation to then move on to Pitch 101, which is a chapter uh, in which general theory teachers provide lessons on basic pitch notation. Um, instrument specialists teach the first five pitches, 
and then demonstrate various exercises that build upon the rhythms that I've already learned. <clears throat> So after Pitch 101 is a beginning song library with uh, public domain songs composed of the first five pitches learned, and then comes Pitch 102, which uh, teaches the last three pitches of the first major scale. Sorry, I have to get some water. <clears throat> Throat's a little scratchy there. So teaching the last three pitches of the first major scale, uh, and then Scales 101 is after that. For Scales 101, concert band students are learning the B-flat, concert B-flat major scale, and orchestra students are taught the concert D major scale, so same as traditional method books. As you can see, practicing musician builds upon each concept sequentially. What I personally love, and what was so surprising to me, actually, because I had not thought about this when I started to build practicing musician and work with educators, is that... Um, the educator actually learns a lot because they might have taken a two, three month brass methods and woodwind methods class, but their primary instrument is percussion. And that's the extent of their knowledge on brass and woodwind. And then they go and they teach for 20 years and maybe go to some master classes or whatnot. They really, you know, being able to refer back to these videos at any time helps the educators. That was a huge surprise to me. Um, Another thing that educators love is being able to reassign a student who is behind the rest of their classmates the video tutorial that will help them gain the skill that they didn't fully master when it was initially assigned. Okay, And you can do this without actually taking any time out of class or reducing your time spent with other students. Conversely, you can assign a student who is ahead of the rest of their classmates video tutorials to help them continue learning at their own pace. Now. Regardless of whether a student is ahead or behind other classmates, you can assign them the material required to participate with their ensemble. So in other words, the personalization, that personalized learning, um, it's simply an additional benefit to the normal student progression that's built into Practicing Musician. Now, as mentioned, Practicing Musician can be used as a supplement to method books, and we are continually adding content and refining our methods. This coming school year, we plan to add increasingly advanced concert band and orchestra repertoire for use in middle and high school music programs, which you can use to push your students who need an extra challenge. Okay, so as mentioned, each of our tutorials covers only a single concept. Single concept tutorials make it easy for you to personalize learning for every one of your students, because let's say that they haven't learned or they're on the scales 101 chapter, but uh, that Mariah is really <clears throat> struggling with embouchure still, okay? You can assign Mariah the embouchure lesson again, and you don't have to take any time away from the rest of your students. Um, each of these tutorials, because there's a single concept, it's an average of 90 seconds, results in a higher rate of information retention. So I'm gonna play an example here, which is clarinet, hurry up, See. We're going to move to exercise number five. It's called Hurry Up. Once again, it combines all the rhythmic patterns we learned. What I want you to concentrate on in this exercise, during the rests, I want you to think about your embouchure and the air support. I'm going to count to four, and then we will start. One, two, three, four. So super simple rhythmic exercise. <clears throat> so while video tutorials that teach general music concepts are, are helpful, there's massive benefits to having an instrument specialist model all instrument specific uh, concepts and techniques in real time for your students to mirror. So even though this is only a rhythm exercise that's being demonstrated, hearing it with the clarinet, a real clarinet, not a MIDI clarinet, is huge benefit to students. We again have over 3,500 video tutorials spanning 16 instruments. 
Um, and uh, so Practicing Musician provides all your students access to the instrument specific modeling, ensuring you can personalize each individual student's learning so that gaps in each student's knowledge can be filled. Now, before the pandemic, our video production team included Emmy Award winners, teachers who are members of the Seattle Symphony, such as Emil Kudiev, who you just um, watched playing clarinet, uh, Pacific Northwest Ballet Orchestra, and other world-class institutions. But we created the Music Educator Online Learning Project um, and began working with volunteer music educator contributors. This was just in July 2020. And we worked with our Emmy Award winning uh, team to design training materials so that any musician or educator can volunteer to produce high quality video tutorials that fit into the scope and sequence of our method. All contributors participate from the comfort of their own homes with equipment they already own, so it costs volunteers nothing other than their time. And it costs us just a small amount in training and project management expenses. This is one of the reasons we are able to provide our service to all music programs completely free of charge. The other thing is that crowdsourcing also ensures that our teachers are from, oh, excuse me, diverse backgrounds, right? That we can promote equity because everything's free of charge and that we embody inclusion because anybody can contribute. You can all contribute. So again, we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, after each video tutorial, questions automatically appear on your student's screen. The questions serve three purposes, to allow you to gauge how well students process the information in the video tutorial, to facilitate critical thinking about the information presented in the video tutorial, and to hold students accountable for learning at home. To gauge how well students process the information in the video tutorial, some questions are strictly knowledge-based with the answer provided by the teacher in the tutorial. So <clears throat> for this lesson about repeat signs, uh, or sorry, about uh, the, the lesson, uh, hurry up, the question to help students process their newly acquired information about rhythms is, what kinds of notes and rests will you be playing in this exercise? So they heard whole notes, they heard half notes, and they heard quarter notes. And they'd already learned about each of those in individual video tutorials before watching this demonstration. So then we also have questions that help facilitate critical thinking about the information presented in the video tutorial, <clears throat> which uh, some, and some of them require the student to connect the information from the tutorial to his or her own experience. So this information becomes knowledge. So for this lesson, does the steady beat get faster no, I mean, it's just that the note value gets shorter over time. So it is an, it's an illusion where it appears to get faster, but it's really just that <clears throat> the beat's staying the same and the note value is shortening. Uh, the other one then is what is your favorite part about this exercise? And so it really gets them to think about, well, different components. Uh, maybe it is that it seems like it's speeding up, but it's really not speeding up. <clears throat> Now, after your students submit answers to the questions, instrument-specific sheet music will load so they can practice the concept. So we have here, Hurry Up. This is actually a piece that I composed um, a few years ago, actually, before we had the online learning project up and running. Now, to help students practice Hurry Up, this is just a simple rhythmic exercise, and it uses the single line staff and the percussion clef, which they have already learned about. Um, and it allows them to really focus on uh, just playing the rhythms without having to worry about intonation or any of the <clears throat> any of the complexities associated with pitch, the, the fingerings, all that kind of stuff. So what this does, in essence, is it allows students to fully focus on spatial awareness of just their embouchure and making a sound, and then the timing. Um, and so it reduces, it takes away, actually it doesn't reduce, it just takes away a ton of layers of complexity um, before they then will add on additional layers with each subsequent lesson. After the student practices each exercise or song, they will click a link beneath the notated music and fill out developmentally appropriate practice logs adapted from the model cornerstone assessments. Their answers will be stored in your learning management system, and I'll show you how to access their answers and provide medals during the walkthrough, <clears throat> which let's get to that right now. The first thing to do, I'm just gonna go here, 
Let's go to practicingmusician.com. And so you start by creating an account. So you're going to input your information. So I will do that now. I don't need to talk about this as I'm doing it. But I do want to say make sure you enter correct information. Um, will really help us make sure, especially if you're using our fundraiser, that we can get the money to you, that you can see an update on how much money has been fundraised. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of different reasons why we need you to enter that information. And uh, the fundraiser is probably the biggest, so I will go over that here in a bit. Right now, I'm just going to bada bing, bada boom. <clears throat> over here no reply so I got my confirmation email here confirm my account and I am in boom okay so we have tool tips so if you're not super tech savvy even if you are tech savvy and just want to be walked through all the features you can click next go through them all in real time. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna skip them and walk you through them on the video <clears throat> instead. So what I'm gonna do first is have you, I'm gonna actually create two fake student accounts so that you can see how this works. I'll actually create a whole bunch. I created a template before I did this. But to create student accounts, we have you create them within our app. This means that students don't have to have uh, an email confirmation and so there's no policies being broken. You're not going to have to worry about any uh, potential barriers to entry there. So you just download the template. You're going to fill out the sample data. You're going to save it. This is critical. Save it as a CSV which means comma separated values and then you're going to choose that CSV file. Again, I've already done that now. Let's actually look at what it looks like though. Just a moment. So, first name, last name, email, password, class, school. And what do you know? First name, last name, email, class, school. And you'll actually change their passwords here, right? So it's pretty straightforward. You just got to make sure to get all this information in. When you choose the file, Come to the template, import students, and voila. Okay, so the reason we put it in a CSV is you can copy and paste any of the information um, from, let's say, Google Classroom or anywhere that you have student in a data stored and just copy it directly into that template. Now, this class and school information is critical because it's how they are organized in your learning management system. So when you assign uh, let's say a unit um, to a class it is assigned to class one and it's not assigned to class two so that's one important reason um, if you make a mistake here you can just click on the edit and change their class so it's not you don't have to redo the whole process the other thing is as I mentioned you can change their passwords here um, so they'll never you know you have full control over your students accounts and they'll never have to have an email from us let's see so a few key features, you can sort by any of these here. Um, and the other one is deleting your students' accounts. You can delete all or you know, one or a few. What's critical to understand is that all of their data will be deleted. You can't access it. We can't access it. You can create their accounts again, but all of the student progress will be lost. So we have this extra firewall here just in case you accidentally click delete. Um, but don't do it unless it's the end of the school year or you're trying to clear out your uh, class administration or a student left your class or whatever the reason might be. <clears throat> so let's see, we're moving on to the next stage. We're gonna walk through the features on our current learning management system, which we call the Achievements Showcase. And so it's in the Achievements button right here. Yeah, you can pause this if you need any help and come back to it at any time if you uh, 
if you have questions about how any of this works. For now, I'm just going to kind of go through at a pretty steady pace. Um, you see the school and the class that you entered in your class administration are right here. And um, so we'll start by actually assigning LaCroix here. Got a fancy sparkling water name. Um, a primary instrument. Now, you will be able to assign their primary instrument. Your student will also be able to assign their primary instrument if you have not. For the sake of this walkthrough, we're going to do flute. Now, you can assign another instrument here to that same student. They cannot assign a second instrument to themselves. And the reason is we don't want them to get too distracted. We want them to be focused on what they are learning, um, which I would imagine you probably want as well. But if they are learning flute and clarinet, boom, you can assign them clarinet, and now they can learn both instruments at the same time. Um, so let's go to student two so that we can show you how the assigned to class works. And we're going to assign them alto saxophone. Okay, now these are chapter in quotation marks, accordions, because they're clearly not a book or chapters, but um, organized as we were talking about earlier by musical concept. And we're going to look at Rhythm 101 right now. So we're going to go down to uh, Corridor March right here. And if you want to view any content before you assign it to students, you can click this Play button. It opens in a new window. There's a couple things I want to show you here. First of all, if I click on this in the new window, I can download every single video. So as mentioned, all videos are downloadable. So if a student doesn't have access to consistent or stable internet access at home, boom, you download it at school, they can watch it at home, they can do their homework, you're good to go. Um, now let's go back to quarter March. <clears throat> We're not gonna watch this whole video, you can do it on your own time. But what I, I'm gonna show you is that at the end of every video, you as an educator have a peer review process that pops up. This is how we refine our content over time, even though it's crowdsourced. Now, if you really like something or you really don't like something, just uh, give us your input and we will start by refining the content that needs it most. I'm gonna opt out right now. Um, you can also provide feedback on the notated music. This is the exercise that was just demonstrated in that quarter March video. But let's say, oh wow, this is pretty cool. Left, 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 right, left, right. It's got that nice March. I'm gonna get feedback on this. Boom, okay. Great, all that stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna skip this. But just so you know, you have that level of control in it. We're trying to make it into exactly what you want it to be at all times. Uh, so I'm going to close this window with quarter March. I'm going to go back to the achievements, excuse me, achievement showcase. And let's see, there are three main ways to assign content. The first is to click right here. So quarter March, go back to that example. You can see Apple Juice is actually the name of this student. I can sign a single lesson to Apple Juice or the alto saxophone lesson. Okay. Now I can sign this unit, which includes quarter march, to Apple Juice, the alto saxophone lesson, or to class one. The reason that we don't have practices or lessons assigned to individual students is because there are instrument specific tutorials. So even though this is quarter March, it's demonstrated by an alto saxophone player, whereas the tuba uh, curriculum has quarter March demonstrated by a tuba player. So you, and, and not only that, but there are sometimes additional concepts or um, <clears throat> techniques taught for certain instruments that are not taught by others. So the sequence might have additional lessons. So we grouped all like videos 
into units for you to assign to the class. I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to go, let's see. Okay, actually, you know, I'm going to do the technique 101 so that you can see more how these uh, <clears throat> instrument specific concepts work together. What you're probably asking yourself is how do I know which lessons are taught on other instruments if I can only see one instrument at a time in my achievement showcase? That's why we designed our Fundamentals of Music Mastery course outlines. To access the outline, you just go back to your dashboard here. So when you click dashboard, you come to this news section. And Fundamentals of Music Mastery, we have one for concert band and strings. We'll go to the concert band right now. They're organized, uh, the concert band and orchestra, in the same way. I'll make this bigger so that you can see it easier on your screen. You'll see right now that there's currently a short list of 11 chapters. As mentioned, our online learning project contributors are finishing books two and three at the moment. Uh, so in total, concert band books one, two, and three will equate to 71 chapters. So we have 60 more chapters. All of the sheet music is finished. And we just are waiting on the video tutorials, which a lot of that is finished as well. Um, for orchestra, there's I have, what, 86 chapters for books one, two, and three. So there's a ton of content here, right? And our goal is to make this publicly available sometime early this fall. What I'm going to direct your attention to right now is this key on the right-hand side of the page. It's really easy to tell the difference between video tutorials and sheet music because well, video tutorials just bold font and sheet music is bold, italicized, and underlined. And then the units are color-coded right here. So we're going to take a look at Technique 101 since that's what the next draft example was, uh, the chapter that the next draft example is in. You can see next draft length is number three here. Oh. Next draft length is number three here, holding your saxophone, warming up your body. So holding your saxophone is two, warming up your body is one. Okay, now you can see how there are six lessons in alto saxophone, but three in flute but they're still similar, sitting posture, standing posture, warming up your body, right? So these units help you to assign the similar lessons to the instrument specific uh, student, or the instrument specific lessons to the students, all with the click of one button. This is actually also primarily a reality of the first few chapters, and this is due to the beginning technique being so vastly different from one instrument to another. Typically, all instruments follow an almost identical sequence, so we're going to see how Technique 101 translates into the Achievement Showcase. Um, then we'll look at the much simpler, uh, how much simpler our identification system is in later chapters when all instruments follow an almost identical sequence. So leave this open, or excuse me, I'm gonna leave this open, I'm gonna go back to the Technique 101, and we're going to Unit 2, click the three dots, and I'm gonna click Assign to Class. I'm gonna provide a due date of August 6th, click Yes. Okay, we're going okay. <clears throat> Take a second to load, and boom, August 6th, I can edit the due date. But that was for alto saxophone. Let's see what it looks like on flute. There you go. Same due date, three lessons instead of two. So with three clicks, you've assigned a lesson to every, or instrument specific lessons to every single student in every instrument section. So saving you a ton of time there. Now, um, You'll notice when I click this, I can unassign from either the student from the class or from the section. Um, I'm not going to have you unassign right now. We're actually going to log into the fake student accounts to walk through their experience. But first, I'm going to go back to this Fundamentals Music Mastery one more time. I'm going to go back to the top. And then I'm going to go to Pitch 101. So this is a lot simpler identification. Clearly, the unpitched percussion instruments are not learning pitch, so we 
wrote the chapter names right there. Um, so snare drummers are learning rudiments, bass drum and cymbals are just practicing the techniques that they have already learned. Um, also, I want you to notice how lessons that teach different concepts to different instruments that must be played together as an ensemble are noted on this document. Okay, so a good example is lesson one, which teaches all pitched instruments about the concept of pitch right here. Okay, but teaches the snare drummers the concept of rudiments right here. And snare drum is clearly identified with the SD to the right of the lesson title. Now, this can be seen in quite a few lessons on uh, the Pitch 101 chapter or in the Pitch 101 chapter. So lesson three is introducing the clef. And again, each instrument is clearly defined to the right of the lesson title. So all of the treble clef instruments, the bass clef. Now you're probably like euphonium is bass clef. We get that a lot. We've been working with experts who said that there's more often than not for beginning students, um, the student transitioning from the trumpet and treble clef onto the euphonium. So having that uh, <clears throat> notation is really important. Then we get into the bass clef later, and we haven't actually started that curriculum, but we uh, or curriculum, excuse me, but we can get to that pretty quickly after we finish all of this other stuff. So now I'm going to log out of my educator account and log back in with one of the fake student accounts so you can see how all of that is linked together. So I actually need to open this again and get my password. So I had apple juice plus four. Oops. Your students clearly don't have a dashboard with news like you do. Instead, the page that loads when they first log in is their achievement showcase. Because you've already assigned their primary instrument, if you had not assigned their primary instrument, then they would see a page where they can choose their primary instrument. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna show you where their assignments are located. So click play button on embouchure. Now there are tooltip sequences for students too, so they can learn how all of this works. I'm going to skip it for now and just show you that instead of a peer, rev uh, peer review modal after embouchure is finished, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Like you have on your educator account, they have those reflection questions, which we went over earlier. So I'm just going to type in some dummy data. My Grammarly is going crazy here with some. I guess this is a good <laughs> good response according to Grammarly. That's kind of funny. So I'm going to submit these answers. The next thing loads automatically. Let's look at the practice logs. So let's go over to that quarter march practice. Left, 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 right, left. So we got that there. The practice log is right where that give feedback link is. And it looks exactly as I showed you on the presentation earlier. I'm going to give some more dummy data here. And somehow I'm doing good. Oh, I'm not doing so good here. Oh, did good there. I don't know why. I'm going to submit these answers. So the last thing I'm going to do in the student account is just go back to the achievements so that you can see that the embouchure lesson, which was green, has been completed. So it now says no. It's grayed out, and you can see that I've viewed it. Okay. You can also see here that this was not assigned to me. It was never assigned to me, but I viewed it. So it's not green, it's not gray, it's nothing like that. It'll turn these colors after it's been assigned. But right now, there is record that I have moved forward, just as there will be record in your educator account. So let's go there now. Achievements, and I was, was it that apple juice? I think that was apple, yep, no saxophone. Okay, so technique. You see, I'm sure now shows me, yes, I have viewed it and there's a view. So now as an educator, whenever I look at my students, I don't even have to worry about clicking or wasting any time if they haven't done their assignment. Now I can see, oh, wow, this student did their assignment, but the answers are horrible. I guess Grammarly thinks this one's good. So I'm going to give that one a decent one, but that's not so good. I think that they won a bronze medal. Okay. 
But I can also see as a teacher that even though I haven't assigned this, there's no due date, there's nothing like that, I can view their practice log. Okay, so this one's brilliant. I see the gold medal. Okay, so I'm going to log back into the student account really quick so that you can see what those medals look like. Because uh, I think that that's critical. It's really, really proven to be beneficial to students and motivating to students to be able to show those medals off. So you can see, ooh, I got a gold medal. Look, Mom. Look, Dad, I got a gold medal. How did I do on this one? I got a bronze medal. I don't know if I really want to show that off. Let me just, you know, boom, there we go. Gold medal. These are directly associated with the model cornerstone assessment rubrics. Uh, watch Dr. Barak's A New Age of Assessment um, presentation on that PD symposium page I mentioned earlier because he goes in depth about how all of that works in the context of practicing musician and what you can be expecting from us in the future. Okay, couple more things on the educator account. First is a shortcut to viewing the tutorials and practices for each instrument. So instead of having to go to achievements and to the students and all that kind of stuff, you have the ability to just add all of these instruments to your dashboard. So now I can go, every time I log in, this is the first page, and I can go and view flute material. So if you as an educator want to freshen up on flute concepts because you're a percussionist or whatnot, then you can get to the content very quickly. Um, and actually, let me go into French horn right now because French horn was completed completely from scratch. We didn't have this in July when we started the Music Educator Online Learning Project. So you can see these are educators at home. This is actually Caitlin Brock. She is in Linwood Unified School District. Uh, let's see what's further on from the Forte yard line, learning about Forte. This is Anastasia Holmes. I'm blanking on what district she's in. But you can see the quality is great. You can see the fingerings still short, right? We taught them how to make the video tutorials exactly as we made them. Um, so let's watch one of these really quickly so that you can see the quality. Hey, French horns. We're gonna be playing from the forte yard line. So in this piece, we're playing forte, strong. Not overplaying, just strong. We have some uh, leaps in the beginning. So let's just listen to that F, to that C. A common thing for French horns is when you have leaps like that, you overshoot them if you're trying to play too loud. So just be careful, make sure you have control with your forte. Forte means strong, not forced. Here we go. One, two, ready. We got, because we're on the educator's site, this peer review modal. I'm going to skip that. And then the, from the Forte yard line, sheet music. Okay. One final thing to take note of is your educator settings. So if you need to change your password, want to change your name, anything like that, then you just come over here to your settings. It's in uh, top navigation bar, your name, settings. Pretty simple. Um, now I'm gonna pull back up the presentation. So in talking to educators across the country, it's become very clear that the needs of teachers vary based on setting of rural, suburban, and urban school districts. So in order to address the unique challenges of your learning situations, we're taking these into consideration and we'll provide training for rural specific, urban specific teachers, so on and so forth over the next school year. You can actually join any of these sessions if you go to pd roundtable let's just go here really quick right here schedule the free training so really really simple um, 
And if you're on the Practicing Musician homepage as well, then you can also sign up for them about two thirds of the way down the page. So we're here for you, anything that you need. Uh, and this calendar will include three to four professional development offerings each month. We actually have more until school starts, but then it will be about three to four per month. We'll post about these opportunities on social media as well. So as mentioned earlier, crowdsourcing content allows us to provide the Practicing Musician platform to music educators at no cost. We seek additional volunteers, particularly strings, to record videos, compose sheet music, and organize content onto our site. Now, due to the nature of crowdsourcing content, each of the video tutorials and sheet music provides you with the opportunity to peer review the content. As mentioned, our team takes this direct feedback seriously, and we want to ensure that our product is high quality and that it meets the needs of teachers in the field. So we will assign this to uh, volunteers as soon as possible so that it can be redone. I want to share a quote that actually an educator who was in our original beta test program three years ago said, uh, and this was about two thirds of the way through the school year with her beginning band students. She said, thanks to practicing musician, my students are leaps and bounds ahead of where they normally are at this time of the year. This is because of the flip classroom. It's because she used every single one of our lessons during that time. And so it's, it's much more of the content than we went over today. It's really, really I just want to reemphasize that this content is useful all the time to reinforce what's being taught in class via instrument, spe uh, instrument specific video tutorials that they can watch at home. It's absolutely incredible to see how students respond to this type of teaching tool. So please use it as much as possible and just experience those benefits for yourself. Finally, just want to say a huge thank you for your valuable time. We hope that the information that we have shared uh, has been meaningful for you. And I mean me, I mean all of the presenters that you can rewatch their recordings. I mean all of the educators that help to put together these presentations. We all are spending our valuable time doing this because we value your time and we want to give you your time back and we want to give you and your students the best possible teaching tool uh, to personalize student learning uh, completely free of charge. Please reach out to Practicing Musician if you have questions. Training at practicingmusician.com is a great email. That's Nerissa Manella, the chair of our professional development roundtable. Join one of those uh, workshops, webinars, office hours that I just mentioned. Um, just do anything that you possibly can in order to, uh, to get in contact with us because we want to help. Um, now, there's mention about a fundraiser. Watch Beth Slesher, the CEO of Give a Note Foundation, her presentation on that PD Symposium page. It is wonderful. It's a really easy way to earn a lot of cash grants for your music program without spending almost any time doing any activity that you don't already do for your classroom. Thank you again, and I hope that this has helped.